Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day today. It is finally freaking Friday. Things have heated up like crazy in the NFL. We got the Cowboys trying to uh, get Zeke Elliott to reduce his salary. You know, it's probably looking at the six to seven million dollar range. A fair price if they can get that and end up getting about, you know, nine, ten million dollars in cap relief. That is another player, another playmaker that the Cowboys can add. We've got Dak Prescott and Zach Martin, of course, uh, redoing their contracts as well. And it is crazy um, with some of the other moves. Here's what's amazing to me. The Chicago Bears traded with the Carolina Panthers, who were ninth, okay? They were ninth position in the draft, okay? They traded the number one pick, the number one pick for the ninth pick, the 61st pick in this year's draft, and the number one and number two pick of the Carolina Panthers, along with DJ Moore. Two first, two seconds, and a starting wide receiver. That's fleecing a team. That's great if you can get that. And they got it. Now, here's the thing that's amazing to me, because... You know, a few weeks back, we had the Dallas Cowboys were intrigued by C.J. Stroud. Yeah, sure, they're intrigued by a lot of players. You know, I'm intrigued by a lot of things that I know I can't afford, you know. I'm intrigued by, you know, a, a brand new 40-foot-long RV. I'm really intrigued, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to have the wherewithal to be able to make that move. So for everybody who was going off the tangent that, oh my God, the Cowboys are going to trade up and get C.J. Stride. This is how ridiculous you realize that notion is. C.J. Stride may be the second pick, may even be the first pick. He's at least going to be a top five pick, without a doubt. Probably you'll have three quarterbacks go in the top five. And so if the Carolina Panthers, sitting here at nine, had to give up two number ones, Two number ones, two number ones, two seconds and a player to move up nine spaces. What do you think it would have cost for the Dallas Cowboys to move up from 26? Um, four number ones, four number twos, and CeeDee Lamb? That's literally when I heard the Cowboys were intrigued by one of the top quarterback prospects that you looked at that and said, it's NFL silly season. This is one of those ones like the proposed trades, not trades by anybody from an organization where the Cowboys are saying, yeah, we're interested in trade. That doesn't, that doesn't happen because if the Cowboys were openly talking about trading for somebody, then that's actually tampering. And it also makes your hand even harder to do that. That's purely just speculation to get people to, of course, watch. And, you know, I, I, we all know that that goes on, okay? It's a silly season. You want people to watch, you know? Being in the spotlight is an addiction. You love to see the numbers. You love for people to watch. You love to read the comments and things. And, you know, you want to always get that. And this is where we're in silly season where there's all kinds of stories that are going to be kind of stretching the truth or just kind of fantasy. You know, it sounds great when you say, well, the Cowboys are going to sign, you know, Jalen Ramsey, uh, uh, Bobby Wagner, they're going to trade for Stefan Diggs, and they're also going to add DeAndre Hopkins, and oh, they're going to end up getting Orlando Brown as well. You know, that's the Cowboys, that's what the, we all know the Cowboys are, they're not those guys. They're not those guys. Now, the Eagles, if you were to say the Eagles are going to do something, you might believe that, but knowing what we know about the Cowboys and things, just understand <clears throat> what you're getting this time of year is a lot of it is Maybe, uh, as I put it, the 90% rule, 90% of it's bullshit, and maybe there's 10% truth. Now, back to Zeke Elliott. The Cowboys look at it and say, we love Zeke. Zeke's been here. 
We'd love to keep his services, but we can't afford that. And if we're really trying to compete and this is where I'm actually at the moment, at the moment, I am actually hopeful that the Cowboys are going to be changing their spots. They always say a leopard does not change their spots. But maybe, just maybe, the Cowboys this time are doing things differently. And I will point to something that I think is the moment that things may have opened up for the Dallas Cowboys. At least their mind opened up. Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones, they, they love the offense and tinkering with the offense. The defense has always been secondary. They don't really care about that. And after we got Dan Quinn, they kind of left Dan Quinn alone to do what he wanted to do. They let Dan Quinn decide what type of players. Because the fact that we started actually investing in one-technique guys, not not first-round picks or anything, mind you. The fact that we drafted them. The fact that we weren't just saying, well, he's a defensive end, so he's a, he's a defensive tackle, and we can also play him at one technique. They actually started looking at guys and getting guys like Hankins, that are actually one technique guys. They understood about safeties and the getting a safety because then they started controlling the field better and the defense started improving. They've seen results by letting a football person do football things as opposed to micromanaging. And I think they finally have gotten to the point where they realize we need to let Mike McCarthy do the same thing with the offense. We let Mike McCarthy install his offense because, well, we need some change. And we understand that we need to get players that will fit this offense to try and get a result. We've seen teams go through, get players, and all of a sudden go to the Super Bowl that maybe the light bulb has come on with the Cowboys and they realize we can't just penny pinch. But if we do this judiciously, if we go ahead and, and restructure some contracts because we've got voidable years and things, we do our due diligence and our homework and try and make sure that we're not just reaching for somebody, but getting legitimate talent that can still play, that fits our roster, that maybe we have a chance. Right, Roscoe? I mean, Leroy. Leroy. Watching my daughter's dog. So, hopefully we get this whole thing together and we actually begin to make a run at something. I'm hoping, I'm praying. I don't want to start drinking again because the Cowboys make you drink. I'm already wearing my red shirt here because, you know, it's code red with the Dallas Cowboys. The next week is going to be telling of what the Cowboys are going to do. Will they get Zeke Elliott done and get some more cap room? Will they end up getting Tyron Smith done and getting some more cap room? Will they actually be a player in the first week of free agency? All these are things that they typically don't do. I have literally seen the Cowboys go on vacation the first week of free agency. And so now, maybe we're hopeful. and We'll see. We'll definitely have a lot to talk about at 9 o'clock coming up in about an hour and a half from now. Hope you join us live because it's going to get lively. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you.